welcome to my monthly segment on games that time has forgotten. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. This month, mail, pop mail. First, let's get details on this title out of the way. The game was developed by Falcom, the same folks who made the East games, as well as the Dragon Slayer series. Potful Mail was released originally for the Japanese PC 8801, then got a slight upgrade when it was released for the 9801. It got ported to the PC Engine CD-ROM, Sega CD in Japan, and finally, a Super Famicom port. Now here's where it gets a little bit weird. Sega and Falcom had some sort of a deal in place to work together to rebrand the game as a Sonic the Hedgehog spin-off that would have introduced Sonic fans to his sister, named simply Sister Sonic, in an effort to have the game appeal to a more worldwide audience. Pretty sure she would have had an actual name once the game was released, or maybe she was just going to be called Sister Sonic? It was mentioned in several video game publications around November of 1992 as a future title coming to the West. Now I went online and tried to look up some information on this cancelled title. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of googling Sonic fan art in the process. Fuuuuck. However, the fans of the Sonic franchise were not happy about this news and according to info from gaming publications, there was harsh feedback that ultimately led to the cancellation of this project. So instead, Working Designs got the right to rework the title and localize it for the Western gaming market. The Popful Mail you will see in my video here is the Sega CD version released here in the States. The game is a side-scrolling platforming action-adventure game with some minor, and I mean very minor, RPG-style elements. Some have also gone as far as to label it a Metroidvania-type game. Whether you think it qualifies as one, I leave that entirely up to you. The intro FMV introduces us to Popful Male, a very energetic bounty hunter who also happens to be a female elf. Look what the cat dragged in, would you? No, it's no use, bounty girl. Many others have tried, and all have failed. Mucked my armpits and bad eggs. Heads? Who said anything about heads? The artist of the game really, and I mean really, wanted to make sure to drive that point home. I don't think the ears could have been any bigger or any more pointy. And just in case you didn't get these subtle hints, she's an elf. The game has five total stages, but each one of them is separated into smaller sections, equaling to about mm, 24 in total, give or take a few. Each stage varies from one another and have plenty of platforming to go around, but nothing too difficult. You start off from the main castle on the overworld map here, and this part is pretty straightforward. It just lets you walk toward the next stage and is used when you are backtracking to previous levels later in the game. Across the stages, you will have some towns you will be able to visit to regain your health and buy items such as food, weapons, and armor to help you along the way. <laughs> I just can't believe it! Uh, my wedding ring was stolen by the Badger Gang! <laughs> Badger Gang? You start off plain ass Popful Male, but eventually, you will meet other characters along the way with two of them joining you on your quest to collect a bounty by bringing Muttonhead to justice. You heard me right, I'm not joking around. Muttonhead. I'm male, Popful male. Right now I'm after a dangerous magician called Muttonhead. There's a big reward for him. Oh? Muttonhead used to be my teacher. He was once a kind and wonderful person. But then, all of a sudden, he turned evil. One of the characters to join you is Muttonhead's very own pupil, Tat. He happens to be a magician in training and does come in very handy since he has a ranged attack. My name is Tato, but my friends call me Tat. I'm sure we'll meet again. Goodbye now. Gaw, spelled G-A-W, is the third character to join you. He's like a, some sort of a dragon-like creature you initially meet in the caverns during level 3 before he joins your party. God didn't think you had a chance. God promised to give you Muttonhead if you won. God will deliver. Now, I'll help you on your quest. Yes, 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 God. The game lets you change between characters similar to Castlevania 3, which comes in handy. However, in this game, all three characters are available to you at all times once they do join you. 
If one character is low on health, you could go into the menu and select another character. Their health is not tied to one another, so swapping them in the heat of battle is crucial. Speaking of the menu, you have the item menu, the load and select, as well as settings. Quick hint at anyone out there thinking of playing this game, save and save often. Saving this game via the menu will always kick you back to the nearest starting point of the level. This might be a long trip in some cases and it will force you to watch the entire FMV character speaking segments as well. No way to skip them. Yay. As far as the music goes, don't expect to be blown away by the soundtrack. I'm just gonna be honest with you here. The music for the most part stays true to the overall feel of the game and its presentation. If you came into the game expecting orchestra style music with, I don't know, haunting melodies or overly climactic themes, I'm sorry to say you need to go play another game. Popful Mail here is mostly made up of what I like to refer to as bubblegum pop music with some light rock guitar segments thrown in for good measure. Still, I find the soundtrack is extremely upbeat and some of the tracks feel a bit silly, but that goes perfectly with what Working Designs wanted out of this localization. The bosses of the game are a pain at the beginning. That is, until you finally get the pattern down. And once you do that, a bit of patience goes a long way in helping you defeat them. Just make sure to save your game often. Now I'm not going to give away the full plot of the story, if you choose to do that, you can go watch other YouTube videos showing the full playthrough or you can read up on walkthroughs. Just don't expect an intricate storyline full of plots, twists and turns as if it was a Final Fantasy game. This isn't a storyline where you're going to see clones, failed experiments, uh, harnessing the power of the planet to bring about the end of the world by summoning a meteor from outer space or anything like that. This game keeps it all simple. Simple. Remember. Take a pause here and let that sink in. That right there should give you some idea of what sort of direction that this story is going to go. Final Fantasy 7 it ain't. Unfortunately, this is one of those games that I never played back when it came out. I mean, I knew of it, I heard about it on an issue on EGM, and it actually looked like something I would have enjoyed playing at that time. I also saw plenty of ads for it. Unfortunately, a few things kind of got in the way of that happening. Let me explain. First, the pricing. The Sega CD was still new, having been released in 1992 here in the States, it was still selling for about $300. And I was saving every dollar I could get my hands on because I was planning to get a Neo Geo. And I felt it was unfair to have my parents shell out money for a Sega CD knowing I had the money on me at the time. Second was the FMV. The gimmick of the whole FMV was just not sold on me. While it did offer a small glimpse of what it could add to the game if properly implemented, I felt hesitation and wanted to see more games before I could commit and maybe change my mind from getting a Neo Geo. Third was the rumors of a new add-on that was supposed to improve upon the Sega CD and the Genesis. Pretty sure I was in the same predicament as the rest of the Sega crowd out there during that time, confused as to what to do at that point. Do we pony up for the Sega CD or do we wait for this new mystery add-on or new console that might render your Sega CD purchase useless. Then we come to find out it was a 32X. Man, Sega really botched it during that time. Eventually, I would end up playing Popful Mail almost mm, 30 years after its release. So here's my impressions with it after playing it. I like it. I'm still playing it as I have not finished it yet as of the making of this video. As soon as I saw the FMV intro, I knew what type of game this was going to be and I'm okay with that. I'm a big fan of adventure games with RPG-like elements in it and Popful Mail doesn't go too heavy on the RPG part and the platforming as well. I love the option of being able to switch players, although technically not on the fly or with the touch of one button, but being able to change from one character to the next in situations where you are low on health really helps out. For me, this was a feature that came in handy during some of the boss encounters. The characters also felt a bit different in terms of their abilities and controls. Popful Mail is your average character with basic jumping and fighting mechanics, which means she deals with short range sword attacks at the beginning, but is fast in her movements, while Tat deals more of a defensive character with his ability to do 
projectile attacks, but is slightly slower, allowing you to proceed with more caution. Mail eventually can upgrade to projectile weapons, but that is a bit of a problem that I'm gonna get into in a little bit. Plain as Gaw gives you access to some platforms not accessible to other characters since his jump is very high. He also has a standard flame projectile attack that not only allows you to attack from far, but it doesn't deplete the arms bar, located right here, as fast as Mail or Tat. Which brings me to that annoying feature of the game, the arms bar. Once you get your hands on weapons that are basically projectiles, every time you shoot it eats away at the bar. So there are sections of the game, specifically bosses, that require you to shoot away, but you can't because the arms bar is empty. Your range attacks are put on hold for about maybe 5 to 10 seconds. That means any flow or rhythm you get into gets put on hold as you wait for that damn bar to replenish and lengthen some of the boss encounters considerably. It doesn't make the game unplayable, just tedious when it shouldn't be. The levels are not too complex or to the point where they become mindless mazes. There are some very light platforming sections here and there that are made slightly difficult only due to the speed at which Mail moves about. The thing is that your character is positioned too close to the edge of whatever side of the screen you walk towards. Since Mail walks extremely fast, it gives you little time to react to an enemy just past your field of view. So you end up taking lots of unnecessary hits here and there. Which wouldn't be an issue except that your health bar tops at 100. You can't upgrade that either, you're stuck at 100. You can however get your hands on better armor and weapons to help you out. But the statistical upgrades are minimal. You still end up dying after taking just a few hits and even faster when it comes to the bosses. And be prepared to see this screen right here and hearing the same quotes over and over again. Are we there yet? when I should have cadabred. That is why taking on enemies every chance you get becomes crucial since the majority of them will drop gold. There are some parts of the game where you will have to do some grinding, but again, nothing along the lines of say in JRPG. Most of the time I just wanted to grab as much gold as I could, so when the time came, I could grab food and equipment anytime I came upon a town since I had no idea when the next town or boss encounter would appear. Speaking of the bosses, yeah, they can be a real pain in the ass if you take them on without proper equipment or upgrades in hand, or even food. I love Garatus. He looks very uninterested in fighting you until you hit him and piss him off. But that walk and that look on his face, oh, it's priceless. Love it. Overall, this is a great game for fans of the action platforming genre. As long as you don't approach it thinking you're getting a very serious or hardcore RPG style storyline and overall gameplay as part of the package, then you're gonna enjoy this lighthearted slapstick approach that Working Designs created when they brought it here to the States. The controls feel tight and perfect and the difficulty is just enough to want you coming back for another try without frustrating you into quitting it entirely. If you happen to get this game and play it on actual hardware, then remember to save and save often, especially after meeting up with new characters or beating bosses. Hey, is someone out there? Please help me. The wizard's above regarding the key to my cell. Can you get it? Sorry, can't get involved unless there's something in it for me. It will save you plenty of time in the long run. By the way, good luck on actually buying a physical copy of this game though. The prices? Damn. I hate the retro gaming market, I really do. That's why I'm kinda happy I'm not a collector. Now, even though the game never got a proper sequel since the title was released, hence its inclusion in this series here, there were a few drama CDs released in Japan tied directly to this game, titled Popful Male Paradise and Popful Male The Next Generation. For those out there not familiar with drama CDs, think of the old radio shows from the 40s and 50s like Little Orphan Annie, where shows were presented in audio format only, obviously. Now take that concept and just apply it to modern times with these shows being released in CD format. It is a pretty big business over in Japan that is quite lucrative for the more popular shows. <laughs> With many games like Act Racer and Wonder Boy being remade for a new generation, let's hope some company out there revisits the silly set of characters in the near future. 
If you get a chance to play this game, do so. I recommend it. With that said, this has been Popful Mail on the Sega CD, but it's also available on other consoles such as the Super Famicom and PC Engine CD-ROM. Thank you all for watching. Until next video, keep watching, keep gaming, and as always, take care of yourselves.